If you're buying a harp for the first time, you might know that harps are really expensive and there are so many options, it can be really overwhelming. Well, today I'm going to help you out and tell you everything you need to know to make a good choice with your first harp. Hello everyone, I'm Christy Lynn and on this YouTube channel I'm committed to helping you learn to play the harp so that you can share beautiful music with other people and we can spread harp music all around the world. I'm sure it's going to make the world a better place. So if that sounds interesting to you then make sure you subscribe to this channel because I'm uploading regular videos. So it can be a pretty scary thing to purchase your first harp. I think it can be really overwhelming and confusing because there's so many different options and we don't really know which is the most important thing to consider. And then also you do find information on the internet, but it's bits and pieces here and there and we don't really know what is the most important. So today in this video, I'm gonna help you out. I'm gonna take, through, take you through all the different options that you can, can consider when you need to make a decision about your harp. Um, but most importantly, after that, I'm gonna take you step by step through deciding what are the priorities for you and that will suit you and your goals of learning to play the harp. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video because even if the beginning part is a little bit confusing for you, um, I am gonna make it easier as I break it down step by step. And have a look in the description box because there's gonna be timestamps of what I talk about in different parts of the video. So you can skip back and ahead to to different parts that interest you as needed. So let's get into it. Now let's look at all the different aspects of the harp that you need to consider. We're going to start off with the size of the harp and the number of strings. So I'm not going to be talking about pedal harps today because I don't recommend a pedal harp as the first harp that you purchase. They're very big, they're difficult to look after, they're really expensive and there's another layer of complexity when it comes to the pedals. And I know that many people don't aspire to ever have a pedal harp, so we're just going to be looking at different types of lever harps today. There are two different categories of lever harps, there are floor harps and lap harps. Now, floor harps are the ones that are a little bit bigger in comparison to lap harps. They stand on the floor, they have their own legs, and they support their own weight. A lap harp is one that you play either on your lap or it might have a, a strap that you can walk around with it. And it's smaller with a smaller number of strings. Now, there's a common misconception that lap harps would be an easier one to learn on because it's smaller. Sometimes people think that must be what's aimed at children or like it's the first harp that you would purchase. And that is not the case. It's actually more difficult to learn on a lap harp. So the reason the floor harp is easier and the one that I would recommend when you're first learning to play the harp, if at all possible, is because it supports its own weight. So that means that it's not as it's it's much easier to position your body in comparison to the harp. Um, so the harp is going to be sitting on the floor. You'll be able to put your body in the right position, and then you're going to find it easier to learn finger technique and how to hold your body when you're playing the harp and you won't have as much likelihood of tension building up because you won't be having to like kind of brace yourself to keep the harp still you won't be having to worry about that as much with a, a floor harp so there are some cases where you might want to buy a lap harp as your first harp and that would be if you are specifically purchasing your harp to be able to move it around a lot. For example, if you're going to be playing in harp therapy and you're going to be playing a lot in small spaces, you want to be able to take your harp outside a lot, maybe travel with it very, as easily as possible. Um, and if you have a very, very small confined space with all the place where you're learning to play the harp, then maybe you would consider purchasing a lap harp. Um, but if at all possible, if it's just for an affordability reason, I would say that rather go for a second hand floor harp or save up for a little bit longer if you can, because it's really going to help you in the long term if you learn your technique on a floor harp at first. But of course, this is my opinion. In the end, you need to decide what you are happy with, and that is fine. And then when it comes to the number of strings, I would say that the the kind of standard number of strings is 34 strings for a floor harp. So that's really great. You get some nice bass notes and you have more than enough in the top treble end as well. Um, you don't really need anything bigger than 34 strings to be able to play most music. Some people like the extra two bass notes that you'd get with 36 strings, but then your harp is also going to be heavier. So 34 is great. And then um, if you're going to purchase a lap harp, I would say don't go for less than 26 or 27 strings. 
you can kind of deal with 22, but um, you're going to be really losing some of those bass notes. So I would recommend going for 26 or 27 with a, a lap harp if you can. Now let's look at string tension. So you get high tension, medium tension and low tension strings. Low tension strings are easier to pluck because they're looser and they have tend to have a brighter tone and they're easier to play fast music on and so therefore if you're really wanting to play Celtic music and that's the only style you're interested in then I would highly recommend you go for low tension strings. They're really good for people with physical limitations in finger strength and if you're really um, passionate about playing for relaxation and you don't want to be strengthening your fingers at all then low tension strings might be for you. The negative side of it is that you're going to get a lot more buzzing so that will be a bit more of a struggle and it is more difficult to learn some aspects of technique. High tension strings are really good for developing finger strength and good technique and this is going to be really important particularly if you like classical music and you're considering going towards playing the pedal harp you're going to want that finger strength to have an easy transition to playing the pedal harp so if at all possible you'll want a harp uh, a lever harp with high tension strings but uh, oh and then also some people prefer the tone of a higher tension string um, it tends to be gut strings and it tends to have a richer warmer tone to it but some of the reasons you might not want to go for a high tension string would be if you are concerned about injury. Now, if you don't have good technique, you're more likely to get injured. If your technique is good, that shouldn't be a problem. But it's also a bit trickier to manage tension. So if you again, if you don't have good technique, you're more likely to be tense when you're playing a higher tension string. So what do I recommend when it comes to string tension? If you particularly like the sound of higher tension strings or you're going towards playing a pedal harp, then go for higher tension. Otherwise, go for medium or lower tension strings. Now let's look at types of strings. So there's three main types of strings, nylon, gut, and carbon fiber. Nylon strings are more durable than gut strings and they have a brighter sound so, and they're less expensive. Gut strings, on the other hand, have a warmer, richer sound they are more expensive and they're also more likely to break. They're not very durable. If there's changes in temperature or humidity, you're going to have your string popping and you're going to have to change that string. But for some people, it's really worth it for the tone of the harp. Then carbon fiber strings have the brightest tone. They tend to be quite strident and um, a strong, bright tone. They're by far the most durable, but they're also the most expensive. So what do I recommend? Nylon is a good choice for most people. It's cheaper than the other strings and it's got a lovely bright tone, which a lot of Celtic harpists really like. If you particularly like the sound of gut strings or carbon fiber strings, then go for it. Spend the extra money and go for those ones instead. And especially if you're wanting to go towards a pedal harp, then gut strings would probably be a good idea. Next, we're going to consider string spacing. Now, this is the distance between the strings, how close or far apart they are from each other. And there isn't really a standard when it comes to that distance. Even when people talk about concert spacing, there seems to be some variation between even pedal harps. So, but I've noticed that the, the variation in spacing between pedal harps and most floor harps is pretty similar. So I wouldn't be too concerned about it if you're going to get one of those types of harps. But I have noticed that lap harps often have much narrower a string spacing which isn't the end of the world but it's not as good for learning good solid technique and you're more likely to have struggles with buzzing and also learning to cross over and under so some aspects of technique are more difficult to learn so my recommendation is that if you're going for a floor harp you probably won't have to worry about considering string spacing but if you're going for a lap harp just know that this might be something that you have to consider now let's talk about levers. I'm not going to talk about the types of levers today because I don't think that's a major consideration. As long as you're going for a good harp brand, I think the levers will be fine. But we are going to talk about how many levers you want because some lever harps like mine have levers on every string. Others only have um, like F levers or F and C levers or B flat levers. So we need to consider, do you want all the levers? Is it worth spending a little bit of extra money? So the reasons you might want to get all the levers is if if you're a multi-instrumentalist and you like to be able to play in any key, maybe you're a singer and you really want to have that flexibility of choosing the exact key that works best for your voice, that's what I felt, um, or maybe you're going to be playing in a band or with other instruments and you want to have the flexibility to join them in any key and be able to change between the keys very easily without tuning or detuning your harp. 
then good idea to have all the levers and also if you're going to be playing from sheet music a lot then you're going to want to be able to play in the key that they mentioned in the sheet music without too much trouble and particularly if you're wanting to play classical music you're going to need all those levers so what are the reasons you might not want to have all the levers well it is cheaper so you can save some money and i think that's probably the only reason why you'd want to get less fewer levers so what is my recommendation i would say if at all possible get all the levers it's just going to be easier and it's one more thing that you won't have to consider when you're choosing different pieces but if you are going to save some money and get fewer levers on your harp make sure that the harp maker is able to put on levers at a later stage if you find that you really want them now let's talk about the weight of the harp. So the weight of your harp is linked to the size of the soundboard. That's the part at the back here. If you have a really big soundboard, you're going to have a beautiful big tone of your harp, but it's going to be a lot heavier. And if you go for a harp that's um, a little bit smaller and lighter, then you're probably going to sacrifice some of the sound that you could be producing from your harp. So if you are going to be playing your harp mostly at home, and you are not going to be moving it around that much or if you're really strong or you have someone strong to carry the harp for you then you don't need to worry too much about the weight of the harp then i would say just go for something that you really like the sound of the weight is not going to be a big concern but if it is a concern for you because maybe you have health issues or you're a traveling musician and you want to move your harp around a lot then you might want to go for something a little bit smaller some harp is harp makers especially make their harps a little bit lighter especially carbon fiber harps and the other there are other designs that are made to be a little bit lighter you could also go for a lap harp but as i spoke about earlier then it is a little bit more difficult to play so that's something you're going to have to consider my recommendation is that when you're going for your first harp i don't think weight should be a huge consideration maybe if you compare harps from different harp makers and you find that the same number of strings on the harp is way heavier in one harp maker than the other then maybe go for the lighter one you you might appreciate that later on when you're moving your harp around now lastly let's talk about accessories when you're purchasing your harp it's quite a good idea to purchase a few of the accessories that you'll need at the same time especially if you're having your harp shipped from overseas may as well get the accessories at the same time but some accessories are more important than others and you don't need to go for everything so let's talk about each of them when it comes to a harp bag, a harp case, a dust cover or a travel case for your harp, I would say that you need one of these. When you're first purchasing your harp, you probably don't need a, a hard fiberglass case for your harp unless you're going to be traveling a whole lot with it all the time and you know that you're a traveling musician, but they are quite expensive. So you should be fine with just a, um, a lightweight material cover for your harp and you don't really need a separate dust cover for your harp if you're concerned about dust you could put your material bag over your harp when you're not playing it one thing you're definitely going to need is make sure that the harp maker sends you a tuning key with the harp you have to be able to tune your harp and then you're also going to need a tuner uh, I don't think that it's important to buy a special tuner for tuning your harp there's really great apps that you can use directly on your cell phone so I don't think that's necessary but it is necessary to have a music stand, especially if you're going to be learning from sheet music. But even if you're just going to want lyrics or chords or the tune that you're playing. So a music stand is really important so that you can have it, the music at the right height and you don't have to turn your head or compromise your position at the harp when you're playing. Now, in order for you to be at the right position with your harp, you're going to have to make sure that you are the right height and your harp is the right height. So to get your harp in the right position, if you've got a smaller harp and it is a floor harp, but it's very short, you'll probably have to put it on a box or some kind of stand to get it to the right height. But I wouldn't say you should go for this when you first purchase your harp because you're going to need to test it out according to your body and how it suits you. So you can start out by testing this with a stack of books or a box from your house. And then later on, you can purchase something to get your harp to the right height or have it made or make it yourself. But um, when it comes to sitting at the harp, I would say it would be really nice if you can get a stool at the same time as purchasing your harp. I will put a link down below to the type of thing that I'm talking about, something that is height adjustable so you can figure out what is the right height for you when you're playing the harp. But if you can't get that, we can also make do with a normal dining chair with a, um, a cushion on it. 
that would be nice if you could get a stool. All right, I hope you made it through the video up to this point. I know it's a little bit overwhelming to talk about all the different aspects of the harp, but that's why I'm now gonna take you step by step through everything you need to consider. And hopefully by the end of this video, you will know just what type of harp will suit you. Step number one. I would suggest that if you have a friend or a teacher or someone who knows something about harps, talk to them, get their advice and discuss this with them. If you have someone to talk to, there's no need to do this on your own. Step number two, decide if you're going to rent or purchase a harp. Renting is a really good idea when you get started because it gives you the time to learn a bit about the harp, figure out what you like in a harp, and then when you're considering different harps to purchase, you can actually play them and see what you like. I rented a harp for at least six months before I purchased my first harp, and it was expensive to rent, but I don't regret it at all because I made a much better decision after those six months. Step number three, think through your reasons for learning to play the harp because this is gonna have implications in the type of harp that would suit you. So firstly, the genre of music that you like. If you're wanting to play recognizable tunes and flowing, beautiful music that's just gonna be relaxing, um, then it doesn't really matter what style of harp or what type of harp you purchase. I think you need to go for something that speaks to you and that has a beautiful tone that you like. If you're wanting to play Celtic music, then this works best with a, a brighter tone and a, a lighter tension string and maybe nylon strings would be a good idea. So an easy, safe bet would be something from Dusty Strings or Kamak. They are very good harp brands. If you're specifically wanting to play classical music and potentially going towards playing a pedal harp in the future, then I would suggest going for something with higher tension strings and potentially gut strings. So easy safe bets for that would be something from Lion and Healy, from Salvi, or from Aoyama. If you're wanting to play jazz harp, then you're probably going to want to play a pedal harp in the future. Pedal changes make it a lot easier to play jazz. So in that case, the same recommendations that I made for classical music would apply. Next, we need to consider whether you're going to mostly be playing on your own or whether you're planning to play with a group of other musicians like a Celtic session or um, maybe even an orchestra or with a band. So of course, if you're wanting to play with an orchestra in the future, you're probably going to want to work towards getting a pedal harp. So it would be good to go for a lever harp that's a bit more classical. Um, but if you're wanting to play in a band, the other instruments in the band are gonna be so much louder than your harp that you're probably gonna to want to look for a pickup so that your harp can be heard. If you're wanting to play with Celtic sessions or small ensembles with other musicians, um, still try and go for a harp that has a bigger sound because other instruments tend to drown out the harp a little bit. If you're really wanting to go into playing healing harp music or playing harp therapy, then you would need to consider a harp that's easy to move around, particularly if you're going to play in a hospital or a hospice type setting. There's smaller spaces between hospital beds and you probably need to move your harp and fit into small spaces. So you might even want to consider a lap harp or at least a smaller floor harp. Also, you might wanna be able to allow your patients to pluck the strings themselves. And if they're really, um, they don't have a lot of strength, it would be helpful to have a harp with lower tension strings. Also, you might wanna play music for long periods of time and to feel really relaxed yourself so that you can bring the right atmosphere to the room. And in that case, it'd be a really good idea to go for lower tension strings so that you don't get tired. If you're planning to travel a lot with your harp, then again, you might wanna go for something that's a little less heavy, but also maybe consider going for a harp where you can get a hard travel case for your harp. Some companies make covers specifically for their harps, and so that might be something to consider. Step number four, you need to consider what kind of sounds do you like listening to? Some people are naturally drawn to bass sounds um, and they would really need to have those bass notes on the harp, otherwise it's not gonna feel fulfilling. Um, some people like a really warm, rich, deep sound. I tend to be drawn towards that kind of sound. And so then you might wanna look at a gut string whereas other people prefer a bright, light, clear, strident sound, and that would also consider the type of harp that you purchase. So the only way you're going to figure this out is by listening to lots of recordings of harp music and also by playing it yourself so that you can hear in the room what it really sounds and feels like. 
Step number five, consider if you have any physical limitations. So for example, if you have some problems with um, pain in your fingers, maybe you have joint problems um, or muscle weakness, then you really would want to consider going for lower tension strings. If you have back or shoulder problems, it's a good idea to make sure you have a floor harp so that the harp can carry its own weight, um, but also not go for some, not something too huge because you probably won't want to stretch around the harp that much. So um, 34 strings or smaller would be really important. Then if you're really short, people often ask me whether that's something to consider. And I would say when you're going for a really big pedal harp, maybe the, your height is something important to consider but most floor hops are a fine height no matter what size you are maybe if it's like a really big 34 a 36 string floor hop that is made to look like a pedal hop so it's really tall maybe don't go for something like that if you're really short but otherwise i don't think it's a big problem and then also hand size people sometimes ask me if small hands are a problem well i can tell you i have extremely small hands and i haven't found that that really affects the type of hop that i consider i think it might affect the way you play the harp but you don't need to go for a small harp just because you have small hands step number six try out the harp yourself this is a super 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 important step if at all possible make sure that you can try other people's harps so that you can help inform your idea of what you're really looking for what you are drawn to because some of this is really just personal opinion and no one else can tell you what harp is right for you so if you are able to um have a, a little trip to a harp shop, even if it's quite far away, I would really recommend it. Um, maybe there's a harp festival or a harp circle that you can attend. Um, if you have friends who play the harp, try out as many different harps as you can because um, you will only really be able to hear the sound of the harp and feel how the harp feels by attempting it yourself. If it's not at all possible for you, you're in a really isolated part of the world and there's no harpists around you, well then you just have to do what you can. But if you can travel to an area where there are harps, I would recommend it. Wait a little bit longer and it will help you make a better choice. Step number seven, what is your budget and is it negotiable? It's only at this point that I would recommend thinking about your budget because you can be a little bit more realistic once you started considering all the other parts of what you need to look for in a harp. Now, I know it's really scary to spend such a big amount of money and sometimes people wonder, am I actually um, good enough to invest that much money in? When I'm first learning to play the harp, don't I need to just start with something cheap um, because I don't want to commit to something so big. But I would encourage you to um, actually go for a good harp because you're more likely to want to stay committed, you're more likely to enjoy the process of learning and to actually stay with it for the long term if you're experiencing this process on a good quality instrument. So if at all possible, I would say give yourself a, a good budget for purchasing your first harp. Um, if you're purchasing a harp from a good harp company that is reputable and makes harps that other people want to purchase, then if you change your mind in the future, you might be able to resell your harp so I don't think you're going to regret your decision completely if you go for a good quality harp the first time and you don't have to earn the permission to spend money on this this is your dream this is something you've been wanting to do for a long time and a good harp is not only for good harpists consider if you're willing to wait and save this is a really good thing to do um, save a little bit more money and purchase a harp that you really like and that you'll enjoy learning on. Um, if you can rent in the meantime, that's absolutely wonderful because you can start uh, playing the harp already. But if this is really not possible, you're feeling so urgent to get your first harp, then I would recommend that if you're on a budget, um, rather go for a secondhand harp than for a really cheap harp. Secondhand harps can be so amazing. Some harp companies even have certified secondhand harps, which means that they've um, checked that they're in good order and they're kind of putting their branding behind it. So those are usually really good quality. Um, or if you're buying it privately, then make sure that you look at the harp yourself and you get advice from somebody who knows. So take a friend with you or um, show it to a harp shop before you purchase the harp because you want to make sure that it's in good condition. I mentioned earlier that I wouldn't go for a lap harp if you're just trying to find something affordable. I would rather purchase a secondhand floor harp than a brand new lap harp. 
Then something that I really wouldn't recommend is going for a harp from Pakistan. So I'm going to read out the names of some of these, for example, Rusbeck harps or um, Mid East Manufacturing, Glen Luce harps, and these are often rosewood harps with a lot of ornate carvings in them. Um, the reason for this is that they are very unpredictable. So I don't want to discourage you if you've already purchased one of these harps. Some people have had positive experiences with them and have enjoyed them. Um, so if you've got that harp already, then enjoy it and make the most of it. And I'm sure you'll have a fun time with it. But when you're looking to purchase a harp, I would recommend you stay away from these because they're so unpredictable. Sometimes they have very poor quality levers that break or don't do a proper semitone or a half tone um, when you move them up and down. Sometimes the strings are poor quality and some people have had poor experiences with the soundboard of the harp being very thick wood so that it doesn't have a resonant sound. It has a poor tone and it can be a little bit unmotivating to learn on one of these harps. If you are going to go for one of these harps, then make sure you try it before you buy it. Um, insist on meeting up with the person and actually playing the harp before you, you purchase it. And take someone who knows about the harp with you to check it out so that you can check all the parts are working and that you're happy with the sound of the harp. Another reason you might not want to go for one of these harps is because they have poor resale value. They don't have a good reputation, so you're unlikely to get your money back when you're purchasing another harp in the future. If you are wanting to go for something smaller and a bit more affordable than a, than a floor harp like mine, then maybe you'd rather go for something like Harpsicle. They're a really reputable company and you should be able to sell your harp secondhand afterwards. Or less expensive than Harpsicle are the cardboard harp companies that have been coming up onto the market recently. Um, so for example, I'm going to read out Backyard or Fireside or Wearing. I would say that these cardboard harps would probably last you longer than a Pakistani harp. I've heard some really good reports about these cardboard harps, they, and I've listened to recordings, they have a beautiful tone. So I think that would be a good thing to try. Now I just want to say a quick note that all these harps that I'm talking about, I'm going to put links down in the description box. So if you want to do a little bit more research about these harp companies and you're not sure what exactly I'm saying or how to spell it, check in the description box and you'll see so many links. You can spend all the time in the world perusing all the different harps and listening to the sound of them and seeing what you like. Number eight, the last thing to consider is where are you going to purchase your harp? Are you going to purchase it from an online store or from a physical store? Are you going to buy it from a harp shop that has all different types of harps or are you going to buy it directly from the harp maker? I would suggest that you go to a physical shop if at all possible and preferably one that stocks all different types of harps because then you can try them out for yourself and see what resonates with you and what type of sound you're really drawn to. You can compare them all and have a wonderful time in harp heaven with all the harps around you. <laughs> um, when you are purchasing your first harp then I would suggest that you go for a well-reputed, well-respected and widely available harp brand because that is the safest bet. So something like Dusty Strings or Kamak would be a really good option. Also, it's a good idea to consider where the harp is made. If you do have really well-respected harp brands in your country, then that would be really great because you can order supplies from them and it will just be so convenient. So I'm going to put a list down in the description box of really well-respected harps and where the harp makers are. So you can check if there's something in your country and that would be a really good place to start. Now a last word of encouragement. Just go for it. There isn't one perfect harp that you can buy. So if you agonize too long about this, I think you're just going to stress yourself out. Just go for a reputable harp brand and make the best decision that you can at this point. And if it's a good quality harp, you'll be able to resell it at a later stage if you change your mind and want to purchase a different harp. And if you enjoy playing the harp, this probably won't be the last harp you ever buy. So I want to just give you a word of, of like encouragement and enthusiasm that it is so worth purchasing a harp and playing this beautiful instrument and I want to really help you as much as I can so if you're feeling quite scared about this then put a comment down below and we'll do our best to encourage you there's a lot of harpists watching this video and they'll prop you up and tell you to go for it and we can be in this together and if you have any other questions also put that down in the comments and we'll do our best to answer any questions you might have about purchasing the harp 
Now also make sure that you subscribe to this YouTube channel because I really want to do my best to help you in this harp journey. I'm so excited that you want to learn to play the harp. I think it's a wonderful dream and I'm really excited to think about all the people that are going to hear harp music because of you learning. You can bless so many people with beautiful relaxing music and I can be a part of helping you to spread harp music all around the world. That is so exciting. So make sure you subscribe and I'll see you again for my next video. Bye!